So this laboratory will be about two port networks in the vector network analyzer. Two port networks are devices which have obviously one port in and one port out. Typical components are filters, transmission lines, amplifiers, attenuators. In our laboratory we are going to focus on megahertz, gigahertz type filter. As part of the process we will go through a two-port network analyzer calibration, which is a very important step. The types of filters we will be viewing will be similar to these. There's a 185 megahertz low-pass filter, a 500 megahertz low-pass filter, a 700 megahertz low-pass filter, a 2.2 gigahertz low-pass filter. As part of the beginning work for the two-port network analyzer calibration, we need to review the single port network analyzer calibration. As you remember, for the last two weeks we have been doing one port network analyzer work. We looked at both components and antennas on the network analyzer. As part of that process we did a one port calibration. A one port network analyzer situation is where you have incident power and reflected power. Now in the case of an antenna you also have transmitted power but from the wired side of the unit it is simply incident power and reflected power. The two components that are measured on the network analyzer are referred to as A and B which form the scattering parameters. The scattering parameters are unique to network analyzers and rarely seen in other applications. The input scattering parameter is the ratio of B over A or the reflected component over the incident. For a one port network it is simply S or S1 which is B1 over A1. The units are actually the square root of power voltage over the square root of impedance. For a two port network devices like transmission lines, filters, amplifiers, etc. We obviously have an input port and an output port. Although some devices like filters can actually be turned around and behave similarly. On the two port network we now have A1 in, B1 reflected, but also A2 in and B2 reflected on the other port. That gives us four different S parameters for a two port device. S11, the input reflection term, B1 over A1. S22, the output reflection term, B2 over A2. The forward transmission component, the output of port 2 over the input of port 1. And a S12, which is the, the output of port 1 over the input from port 2. Now remember a network analyzer has two transmitters and two receivers, one on each port. So that is where the A1 and B1, A2, B2 terms come from. But because there are two ports active, now we must also account for the interaction between the two ports in the calibration process. Upon starting the network analyzer or pushing the green preset button, we have the familiar display of S11, the input port parameter, reflection coefficient, and the frequency range from the lowest to the highest frequency on the 8753E. That is 30 kilohertz. This is 3 gigahertz. Initially, we want to know a little bit about the filter. So I have installed the filter. This is the 700 megahertz filter and we see this response. Now this area here we see is shows a reflection coefficient of more than minus 10 dB down. That's a pretty good match, right? Better than 10 dB, certainly minus 20, minus 30 dB is even better. In this region here where the response, the yellow line and the red line, the input, are essentially the same, that means all the energy being brought in is being reflected. So like an open or a short. If we look on the Smith chart, 
switch over to Smith Chart Display, we can see that we start out in the center, a pretty good match, but we end up on the outside of the chart or a um, open or short or pure L or pure C mismatched, which was this region over here. So now we need to calibrate the unit, but let's pick some frequencies we can look at. I'm going to switch to the S21 response. So we have a filter type response, what we expect. Remember, S21 is the output over the input, so it is essentially the gain or the throughput of the filter. And here we see the filter, we have a response, and then it is attenuated. I'm going to change the display to better look at the filter response by one, by changing the reference. I'm going to move the red line up and that's by moving the reference position. I'm going to move it to the ninth position or the ninth division and we see a better display. Now we can even see the area where we had not seen before below 40 dB re reduction. So now our filter low pass, no pass. Now I'm also going to put in some markers here. So the five markers I've put on the unit, marker one is the lowest frequency at 30 kilohertz. Marker two is where the response is about minus 3 dB, which turned out to be 710 megahertz, the filter frequency. Point three was at minus 30 dB reduced which turns out to be 777 megahertz. Point four, uh, 60 dB reduced, so 847 megahertz. And point five was just the highest of the remaining amount. Now, there's no need to display this information out here, so I'm going to change the stop frequency to be 2 gigahertz. That'll give us a little better display and I'm going to increase the number of points to 1601 which we have done many times. Now I'm ready to do the calibration. When I push the calibrate menu, the cal and then the calibrate menu, we have a choice of responses. We are going to do a full two port calibration. Press full two cal port and we see three terms that we need to calibrate for. We need to calibrate for the reflection coefficients on both ports, the transmission or the through path between ports 1 and 2, and the isolation, which is actually port 1, port 2, and their interaction, and we will end up omitting that part. So I press reflection, and I see that I have open short load, SOL, for the forward port, port 1, and SOL, open short load, for the reverse port, which is port 2. So these are the similar calibration standards we used on the original one port calibration. So now we need to disconnect the filter and put on the load. Alright, so I have removed the cable and filter, and now I have my calibration loads on the network analyzer. On port 1 I have the 50 ohm load. On port 2 I have the short. So now on the forward port which is the where the 50 ohm load is we just press load and on the output we'll push short because we have the short on the output. Now we're simply going to go through and do the short open load on both ports. So now the load is on the port 2 and the short is on port 1. So short for port 1 and load for point 2. Open on port 1, open on port 2. Now that the open, short, and load, SOL, have been done on both the port 1 and port 2, we can press the standards done. It's computing the calc coefficients and the unit is ready to move on as we see the reflection is underlined, all of those standards are done. Now under transmission, we can do both forward and reverse, 
we can do a forward transmission, a forward through match, and a reverse version. Fortunately for us, all we need to do is connect a cable between ports 1 and 2 and press the do both button and we'll be ready to go. With the cable connected between port 1 and port 2, now we simply press the button do both. It'll actually take four measurements, forward through, forward match, reverse through and reverse match. So it's basically checking from port 1 to port 2, both transmitter and receiver. Now when we press isolation, we see some options like the through, but we can do both forward and reverse if we wanted the isolated, or we can just skip this part. So we'll omit the isolation. Once we're done with the third of the three, the isolation, simply press done and we have the two port calibration. After putting the filter back on the port 1 and port 2, we see the display. Now this is the S11 display, which is the input match, if you will, or input reflection coefficient. And we see in this region that it's fairly well matched. Remember, minus dB is good on return loss. There's, there's minus 10 dB, minus 20 dB, minus 30, even minus 40 dB. And then out in the other area, which is the low pass area, we see it's completely acting as a reflection. So we could look at this S11 in terms of a Smith chart display, although it'll be a little messy for us to see. But we see in the center part, there's the matched area or the low frequencies and then eventually the response goes towards an open uh, or pure capacitive inductive which is a reflected component. So we'll switch back to log magnitude. For input reflection or the S11 either the log magnitude or the Smith chart displays are appropriate. It just depends whether you want to think in terms of return loss or in terms of the impedance. Okay, going back to log magnitude, now we want to look at the S21 display. Remember, S21 is the output over the input. So this is our classic filter type display. The low pass filter. You can see the amazing resolution you can get on a network analyzer. This is more than 80, 90 dB worth of resolution. You could never get this on a scope and a signal generator. And that's because the network analyzer, we have control of both the transmitter and the receiver measuring the transmitted and reflected signals. So this is why we use a network analyzer. So there's our filter, and you can print that data, S21 data and S11 data. Both responses are useful for us. So what about the other S parameters? So if we take a look at S12, remember that is looking at the input from the output side, we'll notice that S21 and S12 are almost identical. And that's because a filter is a bilateral device. You can turn it around and it works the same way. Not all devices, in particular amplifiers, work that way. But filters, transmission lines, attenuators do work that way. If we look at S11 and compare it to S22, we again see very similar responses, and that is using a filter and a network analyzer.